is the season. Oh, oh shit, it's freezing, mother bitch! For a Comedy Central original kinda holiday movie. Weak, social, banger, extravaganza. Put this on our tab. Produced by and starring Melanie Chandra. Let's get drunk. Serena Jindal. What did you just say? And Cal Penn. Penn. Y'all need a ride? Who let the hose out? Listen, asshole. Who is this? Your worst nightmare? Maybe a notch down. Your second to worst nightmare? Hot Mess Holiday premieres December 11th at 7. Part of 31 days of going home for the holidays on Comedy Central. But, uh, Serena and Mel, thank you for joining us. You know, you have Hot Mess Holiday. Uh-huh. Coming out. I'm I'm super excited for it. I, when I watched it, um, I was just like, oh, what sorcery is this goodness that yeah. we're watching? <laughs> I was like, this is wild and fun. You know, I didn't know what to expect. You know, it's, it, it, you know, it's also, it is a holiday movie, but it leans more into like the Diwali of it all, you know, and, and brown yeah. Asians. Come on, brown yeah. Asians. Right. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, I, I know y'all had like the Serena and Mel project before, uh, but how did that feed into the inception mm -hmm. of Hot Mess Holiday? And, you know, how it, was it originally conceptualized to be a holiday movie? Like, what was the journey? Like, I, I'm sure it was a long journey because Serena Mel was released how many years ago? But what was the journey to now, to, 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 uh, to Hot Mess Holiday? Uh, Milani? <laughs> uh, sure. So we were trying to, we were in the process of trying to sell a TV show mm -hmm. and we kept getting all of these, you know, answers. Like we've never seen a comedy with two brown females before. It's really risky. There's no data. And so when we had this really funny script at the time, so we thought, well, you know, what? let's just throw money into it. Let's produce something that looks really good and show them what this could look like. And so what we did is we produced this short film, essentially, that um, we put a teaser out online three years ago. I got all of the social media response. Cal Penn even saw it, and that's how he got on board. Um, and so from there, we were this duo, right, Serena and Mel, and we had this short film in our hands. And we used that to go get a studio on board because people could actually see what this could look like. It's not about being brown per se. It's just a buddy comedy. It's just two mm. girls, yin and yang. And so, and just to convey this, this zany sort of comedy. And from there, we got a studio on board and then we started pitching to networks and we landed actually at Pop TV mm -hmm. at the time. Justin Rosenblatt was the exec we sold it to who was, uh, you know, doing Schitt's Creek at the time. So oh, he, yeah, so really um, a, a great eye, um, totally got our sense of humor, totally told us to like lean in, lean into your uniqueness. And we developed it uh, over the course of the pandemic. And then Viacom asked us to kind of pivot gears to a holiday movie. They're like, mm -hmm. we would love to see this. Um, we had a half hour mm -hmm. script. We'd love to see this as a holiday movie. What holiday do you want to center this on? Mm. And all of us on the creative team looked at each other and we're all brown. We said, the <laughs> the <Duh>. yeah. <laughs> mm. it, was, it was just a larger version of, of what the original concept okay. was, which was really cool because yeah. it was supposed to be half an hour and they're like, want to do an hour and a half? And we're like, oh, fuck, but sure. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. here comes another nine months of development. But it was, it, was, it, was, um, it was a blessing because we knew at least, you know, with pilots, they could they they could just get shelved after production, yeah. and so with this we're like, oh, it's a movie, so at least we know like there's a, it's gonna get seen, um, mm -hmm. because that, that's so sad. Pilots get greenlit and then like they still don't see the light of day, so we got really lucky yeah. with that. Yeah, um, and would y'all say that your Serena and Mel on screen are extensions of your real life personalities? Are they exaggerated? Are they kind of swapped? What? what where where does where is the truth in the comedy where where does serena and mel begin and where when, does serena and, and mel it, end like, i ask myself that every day like who is serena where is she why is she? Yeah, yeah but like yeah so, where, where does can, like did you be, yeah, obviously you yeah, based yeah. them on yourselves but like how did you know what we how saw far? in this finish yeah how far did you go with this well i mean like in, in the development process we we did speak to each other and say like, okay, what, you know, what are adjectives to describe you? And what, what are adjectives to describe? What, what do we think of each other? And so 
we, we, it was like a large assessment and just like self introspection, which was really crazy <laughs> because like, but then also like saying the most exaggerated version. So if like, you know, if I was like, no, yeah, sometimes like you're really organized. It had to be like Mel's anal as fuck. Like, cause it had to be the, it had to be the comedic version of that, you know, <laughs> like, and not to take offense to any of it. And then even, and then we'd have to come up with like stories, anecdotes, little tidbits to prove that characterization. So, so if, if we were saying like Mel's hyper organized, like I'd be like, remember that one time Mel that you did this thing and it would be like in, in real life, you know, mm. or like, and so, and none of us could take offense to it. We couldn't take it personally. Cause we were like, this is just in line with your character. Um, mm. And, and then like, even we have, we, there's a scene in the, in the film where we come up against each other, uh, point of contention. And that is all like, just, that was just written like from the heart because Aww, it, yeah. It, yeah, it was stuff that we, we deeply felt. And that was so real to our experience. And if we were to get into a fight like that, like those would probably be the, the sentiments that would come mm -hmm. up. So, mm -hmm. so these characters are very much who we are, that dynamic that you see, that chemistry that's so sparky because it's we're so oppositional and um, and complementary at the same time. Uh, it, it, that's very real. The 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 heightened parts of it where you're like, are these people like real people? That's the part that's on screen, you know? Mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, the dry humping is real. That's for real. <laughs> Of course. I say that. I say that like like you can't. People, but I'm like, that part's real. Yeah. You can't fake dry humping. <laughs> you can't like that is not like you I'm not that good of an actor. That stuff. You can't yeah, yeah. Come up with that stuff. No one's like, that great of, of an like, actor. As, like as that's long as I've like, known Serena, we'll be at like a social function, and then she just strolls right in, and then the first thing she does, she's like, yeah, <laughs> just starts dry humping me. That's and how like, it is. It's just how I how I say show my love, and that's. People can do that and then call Mel Mel, but without mm. that, yeah. you can't just jump to you can't just jump to calling her Mel. Well, dry humping is your love language. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing. There you aggression, go. Aggression, <laughs> aggression, aggression, non-consensual contact is my love. Oh my language. god! Yes, I've been, I've been uh, a little sad lately because I haven't had a good dry humping. I, yeah, we you haven't, haven't been, had. You haven't been getting it, getting it enough. Yeah. A, a good, a, a good, a good dry up. Would well, you like, so what, when y'all, where did y'all find your funny? You know, I, it's, it's, this is like a really weird thing. Like I ask, you know, comedic actors or just comedians or just people who are in the comedy space where you found your fun. It, it's kind of like asking, how did you know you were funny? But it, that sounds such like a, oh my God, I'm full of myself question. But mm. it, it, it's, it's just so interesting to hear people you know, figure out, oh, I'm funny. I could do something with this. Mm -hmm. But where did y'all find your funny? Mm. That's, this is, yeah, we're getting deep now. So. <laughs> I mean, I always knew I was hilarious. So I don't think it's like any you didn't have sort to, of- It arrogance. found you. Yeah, yeah, it was like, it's about time y'all recognize me, Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, but I mean, I was in, in, in this goes back to childhood trauma, like everything else. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so like I'm like I'm the the jokester in the family, just to keep everyone at bay, keep keep tempers calm. You know, like I would use I would use my humor to just disarm and disband any sort of tension um, mm -hmm. that would happen growing up, or like any awkwardness. And then I switched high schools three times. Oh and God! So, wow. Yeah, because I'm a, I'm a masochist, so like <laughs> I would switch I switched high schools three times. So to to, to fit in into each high school. I, I wanted to just be really like ha fun and like happy and, and also being like one of the few, if not only brown people and brown women in my high school, that was another whole whole thing to navigate. So I was like, I'm just gonna like make people laugh and make people feel comfortable. And I was voted class clown in mm. my high school. <laughs> so <laughs> were like the opposites. I was like most likely to succeed or go to Princeton yeah. or be like a rocket scientist. Like yeah, no, yeah, yeah, best engineer. And I'm like, best like penis joke. So like, <laughs> so like comedy, comedy for me has always been like a, a really um, important thread, like just in, in my character, in like my, my value add to society, I would say. And then I took it very seriously professionally and Mel did too by, by training in improv and comedy. And then I got into stand up as well. And so for us, so that, you know, that was my individual journey with comedy. Um, for us coming together, it was very much about us being like, I think it's funny when you do this and I yeah. love it when you do this and we come together, this is funny. And then throughout the years, us really, we always had Serena and Mel on the back of our minds, mm -hmm. even though it was like this, like 
large far off pipe dream. It was just this like ray of hope through all the rejection and all the, um, all the not stints of not working of being like, at least we have Serena and Mel, like one day yeah. that's going to happen one day, you know? So I, as we were, as we were in this journey together, whenever we were out, I know we were both making mental notes of like, that was funny, that thing you did or it, in, in the context of like one day when we have a show, one day when we have a movie, we should, we should do that. We should write that down. We should mm, put that. And yeah. we, and we keep notes like on yeah. our phone of just like funny shit that we've done over the years, like with this in mind. So it was like, it's, it's finding our funny in the chemistry of being polar opposites. And then also like actually being really specific of chiseling in like, what is it? Like, what is that science of funny between, between us? What is the formula that works? So we got, mm. we got really good at that. Mm. How about you, Mel? What, what, where, where, where did your funny come in? Like, into play? Cause you mentioned you were like, most likely to, you were like the polar opposite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was not funny. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't consider myself funny. I, I um I was the polar opposite of Serena. I was like quiet, reserved, like super self conscious with people. Like didn't want to speak up for fear of like rejection and judgment. Yeah. But like I was always so curious about acting. Like I knew I had all of these sides of me that were just will like ready to burst out. And so when I after I graduated with my engineering degree. And ha I got a corporate job in New York City, and then I started watching a lot of theater and improv, and then I decided to enroll myself in an improv class, and then I started to come out of my shell, and I was mm. like, oh, wow, I can actually make people laugh when I really invest in these, when I commit to characters. And so that was very encouraging. And then I think through our my friendship with Serena, she brought a lot out of me as well. And it was Serena, it was other friends, even, you know, my husband, when I would just like go off on things, when I would just tell people how I like really felt, they were like, that's really funny. <laughs> I, like, I just got to honor my truth. And I guess I just have a lot of pent up energy and yeah. when it comes out and channeled through characters, like people love that. And so for me, um, and then I started doing some sketch comedy, writing more characters. Yeah. And um, it, it's been definitely, it's been a release for me. Um, all of those little voices I have and crazy characters, they just come out. And mm. um, I guess that's where I've kind of found it. It's, it's been a long journey and I'm still finding my comedic voice, but I think it's uh, a combination of working with Serena and also Samir Gardezi, yeah. such a talented writer. Um, it, just like the stuff that comes out of his brain is just genius. And so uh, we're able to workshop that stuff with him, like what feels good, what doesn't feel good, but ultimately <clears> the <throat> three of us are able to find, you know, the funny, mm -hmm, the yeah. corrected funny. I propose a full weekend social banger extravaganza. That sounds like way too many words. They're all equally important. Now I'm just gonna stay home and crawl under my weighted blanket. Oh, I totally get it. It does wonders for the nervous system. No one cares, friend zone Freddy. Just give me the weekend, Mel. You gotta release all this energy and bring back that bad bitch I once knew. And you can only do that by getting intensely hammered. Look, whatever happens with Rishi happens, but the only way you're gonna find closure in this is with a big old Rishi purge. You know, wash that mofo out of your soul. I just miss him. I get that. But weekend social banger extravaganza. Weekend social banger extravaganza. Weekend social banger extravaganza. Okay. Yes. Okay. Oh, it's Sheila. She's asking if we're going to her thing tonight. We're not going, and more importantly, she's crazy. Kismeth, tell her we'll be there. Absolutely not. Uh-uh, we're jumping out of that comfort zone. Embrace it, Mel. Two shines to go. Get the hell out of my store. Okay. You know, you have this wonderful cast and when you were creating this story and sculpting this story about the holidays and what I liked is that each of the, each of these characters are like a benchmark, right? And then like Cal Penn revisited, revisits. He's like the Greek chorus that comes in once in a while. Exactly. Yeah, and, um, but how did you just even begin to assemble this cast of characters? Were people just coming in out of like, out of the woodwork saying, I want to be in it. I want to be it. And then you just did, did you build a cast of characters first or did all these wonderful South Asian actors come in and say, okay, let's try to write them in. How did, because it's a big ensemble, but each of them, no matter how much time they get on screen, they get a moment to shine. And we remember each and every one of them. Mm. Um, but how did you just even try to juggle all of these characters and give them shine throughout? <clears throat> 
Well, it was, so it was, it was our first time on the other side of the casting process, yeah. which was super interesting. So <clears throat> we really had to, uh, it was really interesting to, to chisel in and be like, okay, who do we see for this person? Um, who do we see? Who do we want to breathe life into this character? Because they're all, they're such unique characters and they're such, they're characters that South Asians have not played before, which is so exciting. And what's so cool is that since Mel and I have been in the game for so long, like most of these people are actual really good friends or um, <clears throat> or of the core creative group between Samir, Mel, Joffer, and Cal and I, it's either like a, a close friend or like a one degree separation or someone they've already worked with. So so that, it was just so cool to be able to bring something to the table. And then we reached, we, we, we did in the audition process, we like cast a wide net and just put out like, we want to see this person audition. We want to see this person. And it was it was all people that we that we know that are friends. One to like, we would love to work with you. We think you're super talented. Here's a job opportunity that we're actually in charge of. Come audition. Come be with us. Um, and or you're you're our dream person, and you also happen to be our friend. So it was really cool to create our dream list. And then with that, there were people who were like, oh my god, that would be such a great get. That would be such a great get. I don't know if they would do this because the budget and the this and then that. And everyone, every single person that we reached out to were like, including Lily Singh, were like, I will do this. I don't give a fuck, you know, about yeah. the rate and the this and the that and the logistics. As long as it works with my schedule, I will do this. I will show up. So that was like the answer that we got across the board, which was so heartwarming because like, we feel like this is our baby, but like, do you want to be a part of it too? And yeah. everyone was just like gushing, like effusive with emotion and love for like how grateful they were to be a part of our project. And it was like, I'll, and I, I, I'll say this, like for me personally, it was really cool because there are friends on set who I've been, had been friends with for over a decade. Like Ravi Patel and I went to college together mm -hmm. and he was the first person I reached out to when I had that, like when the acting bug first hit me when I moved to LA, he's the only person I knew in LA. And I reached out to him to be like, I think I want to be an actor. And he's like, don't do it. Don't <laughs> fucking do it. Um, he's like, it's soul crushing. And he's like, but just take an improv class and see if you like that and start from there. And I did. And then 10 years later, like, I'm like, oh, Ravi, I'm your boss. So, um, <laughs> and that was really cool. And then Kunal Dudekar and I were in a sketch comedy group together 10 years ago. Dope, Chris Gere and I have been friends for over a decade. We, 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 re, we reunited after a decade. So like, it was just, I mean, Mel, like it was, it was just so crazy. Like a Nick Dodani's good friends with my brother. Like he freaking shot with us. The next day, took a flight to uh, hang out with my brother in New York. Like oh. it's, it's this incestuous like group. It's so it was so cool. And I think for for both of us, the ones who we didn't know very personally, Richa, um, uh, uh, Poonam, like we we now we're just we're such good friends with them, right, Mel? Like they're just like yeah. they have this new new sisterhood of of extended brown act actress friends that feels really good so what, what why do you think hot mess holiday is an important kind of project when it comes to asian representation heavy questions as i sip my coffee <laughs> <laughs> i mean it, it, like you said it's the first of many mm -hmm. and <clears throat> what was important for us is to do 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 the community proud do it right while mm -hmm. being authentic to our real experience so they actually went pretty well hand in hand. Uh, it, it was always comedy first and then and then like representation second. So we didn't we didn't want to go about it the, the other way around. Like it had to be story comedy first and then like mm. what what else we could fit in that that did have this sort of larger. Um, what would you call it? Like almost like a like a, poli not a political standpoint, but like this like call to action of like, yeah, more, yeah, more yeah. movies like this. Like yeah. we're, we're showing you, you know, but it wasn't about that first. It, in, in order to achieve that byproduct, it had to just be fucking funny. It had yeah. to be universally funny. So so that was what, what was most important for us. And I think it's interesting as creators is like, we do have that burden of representation. The onus is on us to, to represent our people and do our community right. And yet you still have people who are a niche within the niche to be like, well, why couldn't you show you know, more dark skinned people. Why couldn't you show also more handicapped people? Why can't you also show um, like queer people? This, yeah, yeah. All of it, you know, and it's like, it's like, this isn't about us being the voice across everything yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and all of it. This is about you being able to point to something that's like, hey, this is similar to my experience and take what you can that is common for you that does feel good. And don't look at it as like, well, I'm still an outsider because these people who finally had a platform didn't show this, this and this. 
We're just showing what's true to our experience and showing that it is possible. Now you, now you go and do it. I'm not saying that's easy, but let's just like honor um, what is being done rather than like further uh, segregating ourselves because something isn't being represented by the people who finally have the platform. And because oh, yeah. we do have the platform, it is important to support the people that have it because that only means more projects for everyone else. Mm -hmm. So that's why like this project has a particular kind of pressure because I'm, I'm sure Hollywood executives are gonna look at it as like, well, how'd the Brown movie do? Like, did it fail or do it, did it do well? Mm -hmm. Okay, now all of a sudden, like, now all of a sudden the slate mandates are gonna go out. Like we need four Brown movies because this yeah. one did really well. <laughs> one. And you know, we don't, we don't want it to be like that. We just want it to be like, bring the creators in who are fucking funny. If they happen to be, be yep. Brown, great. Like whatever, mm -hmm. uh, script story first. But unfortunately it, it has yet to reach that tipping point where we aren't a case study still, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. White movies, I don't think, I'm not sure about black movies. I, I do feel like they, they're, they aren't like still case studies and, and like there's still white papers that can be written up about like how did the Brown movie do? So it, it, we, we got to get past that. We got to, yeah. we got to evolve yeah, past that. Cool. Um, yeah, I think, well, there you go. It's like, you're, it sounded like you were running for Senate and it, I really appreciated that. <laughs> hey, bring me in White House. I know nothing about black women. women. I'm like her hype woman. And I'm like, yeah, what she said, what she said, what she said. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. I, I, will, I will say this though. It was like, there is this under, there's this mission that like, not because we, we do want to do our community proud of all these like young girls that do reach out to us and say, this is great. You know, we love seeing brown women on screen, but also on the other side of it, um, just being as women, co female content creators and being executive producers on this and being behind the camera. It's, we haven't seen two brown women, Indian American women doing that in a buddy yeah. comedy before like this. So um, it's, it's always been really important for us to keep pushing through. Like we, we, we want to do our community proud. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're, I'm going to wrap up here. I mean, I know like we could talk, well, we'll talk more, you know, at the premiere and whatever, yeah. but yeah. okay. So let's do kind of like this rapid fire shifting of the question. So let's, okay. let's get ready, warm up. Okay, so what is your least favorite part of the holidays? <laughs> oh, um, like awkward talk. Okay. Oh, like, small talk with family. Small talk. Yeah, like yeah. people that you just like, you haven't seen for a while and you don't know what to say. And then, yeah, yeah. okay. And that, I'd yeah, say all, all the downtime in the burbs. I'm like, I'm so- Oh bored. my God. <laughs> I have to Move go to the me. burbs. I love my family, but I could only yeah, spend like, like two days like, in the burbs. Ugh, like move my body. I could, I could only go to Target so many times. <laughs> I, don't change, I don't change my That clothes. is what I did over Thanksgiving with my family because there's nothing oh my, to do. There is nothing yeah. to do but to do returns and errands and I don't change yeah. clothes. I feel like a 10 year old. I'm just like, yeah. disgusting. Yeah. Okay, what's your, what's your favorite part about the holidays? Um, I see my parents. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, being fed. My, my brother. No, there you go. Okay, me and Serena, we're, 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 we're all on this being fed. <laughs> I mean, being, um, well, well, being fed comes along with yeah, with being parents. parents. Yeah, that's the only reason why oh, I want to see parents. my parents. I just, I like, I come downstairs, like, you know, and I just look at my mom and I'm like, feed me, feed me. I don't even say hi or good morning. She just knows I'm like, get, get, get yeah. in there. Feed. Yeah. Um, or like okay. laundry, you just come back after your flight and you just like put a pile of clothes. <laughs> yes, there you go. Yes. Magically washed by the next morning. Okay. Um, true or false, Die Hard is a holiday movie. True. <laughs> right? Die Hard, which one? The first one. First one. Very first one. Oh, I think if, if, there's, if there's sweaters or presents or like <laughs> at least two items of like something that fits into a holiday movie it counts as a holiday like my favorite holiday yeah. movie is dumb and dumber but it's like is it's it not a holiday, holiday movie but yeah it is. like like home alone is a holiday movie i would say yeah 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 for sure. yeah, yeah. yeah for sure what, what about the harry potter movies would you consider those holiday movies according to my criteria there's snow there's there's <laughs> magic there's there's presents like I'm yeah magic. okay um this is uh okay so would you rather lose your best friend or all your fr all of your friends except for your best friends best friend oh <laughs> this oh. is oh my god i'm putting y'all on the spot <laughs> i'd probably lose my best friend 
probably you're, just- you're saying that to two friends right now. Oh God. Um, okay, so, uh, so, so, so option one was you get- You lose your best friend, period. And then you keep all of your other friends. Yeah. Okay, and the option two is you- you lose all, all your, your friends. other friends, except okay, so your best friend. So that's option B. Yeah. So there's A and B. Serena and I on the count of three <laughs> are going to answer this. Without judgment. Oh, uh, I don't know. Okay. Oh my God. I'm stressed out. Okay. One. I'm really stressed out because I want, <laughs> I want to, I want all my friends. Like, okay. let's that, see what you, you know. I, this is not in stone. We could talk, we could workshop this later on, but let's. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. I would just kill myself and just let everyone else live. <laughs> I'd be like, I'm sacrificing myself. You guys are welcome. You don't know why, but there's this weird pact that I had with the devil. I don't know how I got wrapped up into this. Um, but as a result- Oh my God, that's a good answer. And that is such a selfless answer. I love it. I'm I can't, it. there's no way I could choose. and be like, I'm out. <laughs> Mel, do you, do you sign off on this? Would you do the same? I would do the same. I'm like, well, no, well, it's hard because I um, I think my, my two daughters would be really upset at me. <laughs> Oh, yeah, okay. that would be sad. Okay. I have to think about them first and foremost. But you know what? Auntie Serena is their favorite aunt. So I'd have oh, to go. Oh, that would be with, really sad too. I'd, I'd have to go with the answer. I forgot which one A or B. Oh, oh just the uh, best friend. Keep best friend. Yeah. Keep the, keep the best friend. You'll make oh, new you, sorry, you You'll yeah. make new friends. You'll make new friends. You'll make new friends. You'll make, that's the bottom line. Have, yeah, she could have all my, my new friends that I keep. Yeah. All these damn yeah, friends. There you go. Okay. And then the final question was like, I just feel that there is a cinematic universe in the making here. Okay. The SMCU, the Serena Mel cinematic universe. I love that. If there was, okay, let's start. If there were one hot mess holiday character besides Serena and Mel that you could make a spin off movie or series from, oh. who would it be? Yeah. Sheila. Sheila. And oh, <laughs> she needs her that own. That is correct. The script phase, it was always Sheila. Like yeah, she's yeah, yeah. gonna have her own breakout show. Whoever yeah, yeah. Yet, Sheila. Yeah. I I, I kind of suspected y'all would say that, and I totally sign off on, on on all that. But um, Serena and Mel, we're running out of time here, and I know y'all have stuff to do. I have deadlines to meet that I don't want to meet, but you know, yeah, adult. Do <laughs> focus adult. On this. Focus on this. I, but you know, I'm gonna see y'all soon. I'm excited right. for, for, for so excited. Wednesday. Um, I, I know probably by the time this video is posted, you probably would have already talked or we will be talking because I'm hoping to post this video on either Tuesday or Wednesday before awesome. the uh, before the premiere, but definitely. So before this video December is going 11. up with me just eating a waffle. Like, you know what? Like, you know what? I'm fine with it. <laughs> I mean, and, uh, that's fine. People should eat more during me. You know, I lived in Bombay like last whatever during the pan before the pandemic. They eat during all their meetings. So I've taken that on and I just like, do that. I don't mind that either. I think it's authentic. It's yeah, it's so it's, weird to just not eat when you're hungry. Enjoy yourselves. Like we're in the pandemic. We all, we all know that we eat. Like we know yeah. that's like everyone understands that, right? So just do it during a meeting. <laughs> but Mel and Serena, thank you all. Oh, excuse me. Oh, indigestion. Speaking Acid of, reflux. Yeah, maybe that's um. why we don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> But thank you all so much for, for chatting with me, uh, this lovely conversation, and we will continue it. Um, December 11th, here comes yeah. Hot Mess Holiday. Here it Make comes. it hot. Make it hot. Make Drop it, hot. it like it's hot. It's going to be dropping in like it's hot on Comedy Central December 11th. So That's right. I, I, I'm excited for everyone to see it. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.